Hey guys, what's up? This is the Young Adults Podcast for Venture Church. So glad that you're joining us today. Um, we're just going to have a conversation today. And the way that this podcast works is that this is an opportunity for us to break down uh, every month's Young Adults service. And so we, as a Young Adults Ministry, meet on the third Sunday of every month. We have a great time of worship, and then we always have a message to challenge our young adults with. And so this is really an opportunity for you to hear some voices of different young adults in our ministry and our church, and really just to take a practical example of, hey, this is what we talked about, and here's how we apply this to our life. Here's, here's what we take from that scripture or that, 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 uh, that, that main thought, and here's how we really apply it to our life and use it to grow our faith. And so uh, we hope that you join us in having this next conversation. We encourage you to think about for yourself what this type of thought means for your life and what this looks like in your life as well. So today I got a couple friends with me. Why don't you guys introduce yourself? I'm Kaylee Patrick. I'm a kids pastor here at Venture and also a young adult. I'm Ashley Beers and I'm on the leadership team for young adults. And I'm Morgan Butcher and I am in charge of the young adults ministry at Venture Church. But, um, you know, so last service, uh, Josh Levin shared with us, um, really pulled from a scripture in 2 Samuel chapter 6, where it talks about the Ark of the Covenant and really the symbolism of what the Ark of the Covenant meant. And it was all about the representation of God's presence for his people. And so wherever this Ark went, wherever it was carried by his people, there went his presence with it. We know that today, God's presence is not confined to an arm, right? It's, it's living within us. It's, it, his spirit is with us. And so we know that our faith isn't confined to an arc anymore or a symbol like that necessarily. But um, one of the main things that he really asked and the question that I think we should really wrestle with in our life constantly, not just like a one-time thing, but we should probably constantly be thinking about this, is how do you and I prioritize God's presence what does it look like practically? If we look at 2 Samuel chapter 6 as they carry around the Ark of the Covenant, God's presence with the people, and they put such a such a big emphasis on how it was cared for and the steps of you know creating the tabernacle, the tent that the ark stayed in, um, all these all these steps, and sometimes uh, we should probably look at our lives and say, How am I caring for God's presence in my life? Um, and so that's kind of the conversation that we want to pose today is what does it look like to prioritize God's presence in your life? And maybe further on, what is, what is, what does that do for you? What does prioritizing God's presence do for your life? Either of you guys want to chime in on that? Sure. I think when you think about that, especially in the church world, that feels like a lot of pressure. Like yeah. you could just mess it up or there's a right way or a wrong way to do it but really I don't think there is because Jesus is so relational and he's not looking for a rule book and so the way that I was taught and think about it is in three R's it's real relationship it's real responsibility um and it's um real relationship real responsibility and then Okay, I forgot the I forgot the third real, one. Here real you something. go. Real something. It's real. But it's a real relationship of how you spend time with your actual friends physically. Like yeah. you spend time with them. You ask them real hard questions. Mm-hmm. You ask them um sometimes it's real deep conversation and it's like digging something up. And sometimes it's just love and laughter and mm-hmm. going to a coffee shop. Um, But then also it's real responsibility of this isn't just something that goes in your ears or in your heart and sticks with you. Like our our responsibility is to then do something with this, that there's action with it. Um, And then that's really funny that I forgot the third one. But it just it goes beyond ourselves. Yeah. And I love how you talk about the reality that it's unique for every person. mm -hmm. Because, you know, when we when you read second Samuel and all the instruction that came with caring for the ark and the process of, uh, you know, the, what was set up to hold the ark within it, it was so detailed and so specific. And yet when, when the presence of Jesus and, and this, the spirit was made available to all, Mm -hmm. 
it doesn't live in a place. I mean, we talked yeah. about that, right? It lives within us. And think of how uniquely wired God created each of us. So it can't look the same. Yeah. It would it would be it would be almost ridiculous to assume that the way that we prioritize God's presence would fit in the same kind of mold as Second Samuel yeah. talks about when you think about how unique God created us as individuals. Mm -hmm. So there might be things for you that really bring you in tune with God's spirit uh, that I would be like, that just doesn't work at all for me, <laughs> you know, like, and, and where it was so structured in scripture in the old Testament, that structure doesn't necessarily resonate or replicate in our lives today in yeah. the way that we experience God's presence. Um, I love, I love your, your breakdown of that, of that though, and, and how it's relational. Yeah. You know, I, that, that's a, that's a really cool thought. Mm-hmm. And the, the third R, I forgot. I remember you remember that. it, it came. It's real devotional life. Oh, yeah. And that, to me, when I heard it, I was like, okay, yeah, you read your Bible. But it's not being told by somebody to read your Bible. When it's really yours, you want it. Like, it's like water. Like, mm. if you stop drinking water, you... You don't know you're dehydrated. Yeah. But, and then with Bible reading, it's opposite. The more that you're in it, the more you want to be in it. Mm, right. And then it's kind of like there's no stopping you once you, mm. right. you start reading. And I think, like, one thing, too, that makes me think of is, like, being able to be in the presence of God, you have to learn how to be aware of God. It's yeah. like when you buy a new car and you're like, no one has Kias, and you get a Kia and you're like, everyone has Kias. Like, <laughs> you, you, just, like, you yeah, just totally. notice things yeah. more when like you're in the practice, mm -hmm. you're like, you have it. And so yeah. I remember one time my counselor challenged me. It's like the soul revolution, like 60, 60 or something. But mm -hmm. it's like pray every 60 minutes for 60 days. Granted, mm -hmm. I just did this for one day, yeah. but I like set a timer on my phone, like from when I woke up, like an hour from now and just refreshed it. Mm -hmm. And she was like, it doesn't have to be like sit down for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. It can just yeah. be like, hey, like I'm driving. God, like bless my drive or just like something yeah. to continually remind you. Like, mm -hmm. and the thing was like, it was annoying. Like it's <laughs> yeah, hard right? to be so aware all day. And it's like, at huh. first you're like, oh, it's been an hour. Cool. Like another mm -hmm. prayer. But then by the end of the day, you're like, again, seriously, yeah. another yeah. hour. And it's like, but God is still there. Totally. And so it's like kind of easy to forget. Right. And it's almost like, I don't want to be annoyed at God for existing every hour, like, every moment. But it's <laughs> like true. You, like, yes. just like train yourself to know that like, just yeah. because we can't see him doesn't mean he's there. Mm -hmm. Well, what Not a great there. foundational, like if we could like build blocks of prioritizing God's presence prayer, right? Like it's, yeah. it's, it's the way that we say so relationally and intimately connected with God's spirit. Yeah. Right. Like, and I love how you talked about Ashley that it, <clears throat> It's not, it's not as structured as just setting a timer and saying, this is my prayer time, but it's living a life of prayer. Mm -hmm. um, when I think of that, I think of something that one of my mentors really, really like stretched me in. And it, it was, he, I don't even think he intentionally knew that he was developing it in me, but watching him and the way that he lived his life really revealed to me what it looks like to just be in prayer all day. Mm -hmm. And so when we would go for car rides and we would go from appointment to appointment or we would go to the hospital, you know, we'd be, we'd be driving down the road and, and he would look at the mountains. Mm -hmm. And instead of just kind of saying, wow, it's beautiful outside, he would say, God, thank you so much yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> for the beauty of where I live. And I think like, you know, sometimes when you're sitting in the car and, and maybe you're watching, you're like, well, that just sounds weird that anyone mm -hmm. would do that. But what an incredible way to prioritize God's spirit yeah. that is always in your presence, right? Yeah. Then just including him in those random things. I remember one day where he was running around the office after work, he lost his keys and he oh, was no. just freaking out, right? Like <laughs> literally freaking out. And you know, like when I lose my keys, I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I'm the same way. I'm just like flipping over furniture and you know, yelling and it's just really bad. And then I just remember him stopping mm -hmm. and saying, you're so foolish. Why don't you just pray? <laughs> like literally That's in the middle cool. of the office, I remember him here. I hear I heard that from my office and he just stopped there and he said, Lord, I know that you care about the little things. Mm -hmm. Help me right now. And literally two minutes later, he found his keys. And that's just, you know, who knows? I mean, I believe in a God who cares about the little things, mm -hmm. but prioritizing God's presence so much that we slow down our life to yeah. take notice mm -hmm. of the little things. What an awesome opportunity for us to say, God, your spirit, your presence is so important in my life that I'm not just going to make it like this calendar event. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make it 
the, the same intentional relationship like that I would say that I, I desire to have with my wife, right? Like yeah. I, I don't want my wife to just be like, hey, Nicole, I have, I have an hour blocked off for you yeah. today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> try that, right? <laughs> like try that in marriage. Uh, but no, it's like we live together mm-hmm. and we interact together on a daily, hourly basis. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you, you can almost view it as like sending text messages. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. honestly just like connecting and prioritizing that relationship. Uh, one of the things, and you talked about the the scripture, the the importance of scripture a little bit, I think, or or you, I can't remember. Whatever, you know, but, but one of the things that Joshua said, he said that the Bible isn't a book of completion or correction; mm-hmm. it's a book of connection. Let's mm-hmm. talk about what prioritizing this book does in our life. What does that look like for you? What do you do to prioritize scripture or the Bible in your life? Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it has changed over as I as I have matured with Jesus it's mm-hmm. definitely what that looks like um, has changed and adapt and I think it starts with um, not thinking of it as like looking just for holy moments within mm-hmm. my day mm-hmm. um, but even adding to starting my day with it mm-hmm. um, and then going from a place where it can be brought into how you guys were just talking about, like, little moments. Yeah. Um, but at the end all be all, it is the inspired word of God. Yeah. That this is the love letter that he gave us that trans- transcends all time, all generations, all cultures. And I think then it's, like, if you look at it as an adventure with Jesus, it's like, mm-hmm. hey, how does this apply? Mm-hmm. Like, if we know that it applies to every single person how does, what does this mean for me? And then looking at it critically, so. Yeah. Yeah. Great thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely like different ways and different seasons that we'll read the Bible. Like it's not the same, like I'm currently, like my summer has been super busy and I just like have not had time to like sit down and just read it like hard copy as Mm -hmm. is Bible. Um, But that doesn't mean I don't want to prioritize scripture or like have them in my life so just like listening to it on the bible app is like still great like i personally don't process as well when i listen but just the idea of like there's sound going on like i could listen to music or podcast but like just to listen to the bible and like know like my subconscious is kind of like taking in those words like those scriptures like even if i'm not Mm -hmm. focusing on it like i'm still like absorbing scripture and like Mm -hmm. to have the intentionality of like i'm still trying to be with god even Mm -hmm. when i might not have my full focus like the thought counts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, like, when I have time to read, like, I definitely try to, but still to just, like, take in the moments and fit into my day when I can. Yeah. Yeah. Typically, I have a Bible study that I'm, like, partnering with Scripture. Oh, cool. Um, I really love getting asked critical questions. Mm-hmm. Very rarely can I come up with that just on my own after reading something. But reading something and then getting asked a question, it just helps that deeper level yeah. of thinking and just it really then connects with the heart transformation side. Um, But something that I used to do was even, um, like I would read something and you read to realize. So it's like if you don't know, if you get done with a chapter or verse and you're like, I don't know, go back. Mm -hmm. Like ask ask the Holy Spirit because he's there. Show me something. And then when you get something, I would used to take whatever that verse was or that thought and ask for a picture. Mm -hmm. And then I would do like... Um, than art with it. So I'm not an artist, not anything, but it was something that I can still remember that verse with whatever God gave me as a picture. And so even being willing to get out of your element of, it's so easy for us just to say, you have to only read. Yeah. But yeah. change change stuff up. Go outside yeah. and read. Or go to a different place in your house and just see if something, a change of atmosphere and then a heart mm. change could pull something out that you yeah. wouldn't think about. That's really good. One of the things that I, I think a lot of people, <clears throat> a lot of a lot of Christians, um, feel the pressure of is like I have to have a set amount of time mm. in Scripture, and I think those are good challenges to make for yourself in, in seasons. But I, I and I like the I like the way that you guys phrase it, right? Like it's a, it's a seasonal thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like you do anything the same way for your whole life, and it begins to have not necessarily less of an impact, mm-hmm. but you begin to view it more. I mean, that's how we, we take our, our faith from, you know, 
relationship to religion really quick, yeah. right? For sure. And and it just becomes something that we do rather than something that is intentional time that we're we're trying yeah. to spend to to receive something from. One of the things that, and you know, I'm similar to you guys, where like in different seasons it'll be you know just different things. And mm-hmm. I, I'm one of those people I, I have to f- keep it fresh, like I have mm-hmm. to keep it new, mm-hmm. and and I can get so like just stagnant sometimes when I just keep doing the same thing. So you see those seasons, and then it's a good rec- realization for me to say, all right, like I need to change it up. Yeah. And oftentimes I know that because the scripture isn't speaking to me the same way. I'm not. I'm not able to apply it to my life the same way that maybe I was before. And so, I'll change it up. One of the things I'm doing right now is, and this is this is where I think it's great for people who feel the pressure of like reading a whole bunch of scripture every day. Mm-hmm. Read one verse. Yeah. Literally, just one verse, but prioritize that one verse yeah. throughout your day. Ask God. Father, illuminate this verse into my life today in a way that makes me think about this constantly in the way that it plays out in my life. So there's been days where, you know, I read Jesus wept. I'm just kidding. And then I just cry all day. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but, you know, it's a like, good one. You, you read, days. yeah, you read a scripture mm-hmm. and, and you just allow that, that one or two verses to really just be the thing that you resonate on and chew on for yeah. the day. And and you you use that, to, it's a great way to, to use it to guide your prayer life for that day. And, and, and you use it to kind of shape the direction of, of your your conversation with God for that day. Yeah. Um, so that's that's been something that I can get in those seasons of like, oh gosh, I got three chapters to read today because I'm in this Bible reading plan. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm in the book of Le- Leviticus and I just don't want to go any further, right? But... Um, you know, finding those different ways to prioritize God's presence, I think mm-hmm. is really important, especially when it comes to how we read scripture and allow yeah. scripture to kind of feed into us. I was talking with someone and they, I was just saying like, you know, I have my to-do list. I have like my chapters and I want to listen to worship music every day. And I want to pray and I want to do all these things. And it's just like the phrase, like you need to do this uh, is such yeah. a killer. Like we're, we don't need to do anything, you know, it's like for our benefit, but it's not a requirement by any means for our faith. And I was, like, telling her this, and she's like, why not just say, like, 10 minutes, like, God, this is yours. Mm -hmm. Do with it whatever you want. And so it's like, it might be worship. You might feel inclined to just listen to music. You might feel inclined to pray. Like, maybe you read your Bible. Like, you don't need to do any of those things. These are all options for you to do. But, like, just let the Spirit dictate what you do with your time and just, Mm -hmm. like, let that be His. Say, like, God, here's 10 minutes of my day. I'm devoting to you. Like, how can I seek you in this? Totally. I think to if if you're newer to reading the bible it's overwhelming it can be overwhelming (laughs) it's there's 66 books in one book and where do you start um and two resources that really helped me was reading reading the bible for all it's worth Mm. um author is gone um but that book breaks it down into what what culturally was happening um Mm. and then also a newer um, is the Bible Project. So that is a yeah. website. Mm-hmm. Um, and through art, they have told the story. And I think when you get an overview of what the books are and yeah. the storyline, mm-hmm. and you can understand where all these families and na- names are going to be pulled up, <laughs> it makes it more yeah, interesting because totally. I think we learn through stories. And right. I think God really put that in the Bible that way yeah. where it's like, here's a, a family that we're following to yeah. Jesus that then, he, like it's a full story yeah. within yeah. stories. Yeah. And I think when we get the big picture of it, it's it's fun to read it. Yeah. And it just totally. stirs something in you. Cause yeah. it's Jesus. That's good, that's good. <laughs> well, one of the last things that Josh talked about, <clears throat> he kind of tied it back to, the, to some of Paul's sayings in uh, his letter to the church in Ephesus. And he said, you know, a large reason that we prioritize God's presence is to replicate what Paul encouraged the church in Ephesus to do, which was remember, repent, and return. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it reminded me that, even just as we were talking, it reminded me that I prioritize God's presence for a purpose. Yeah. And the purpose isn't just consumption. Mm -hmm. It's transformation. Yeah. Right? Like, me prioritizing God's presence isn't just about me, like you said, like, doing the checkbox list and, and, you know, like making sure I get my time in the word and making sure I'm spending time praying. And, and, and if I do all these things then I'm a better Christian, no, the, the better Christian comes when you open yourself up and you are vulnerable enough to allow your time spent with Jesus and the Holy Spirit 
to transform you. Yeah. And this is where w- w- what I think is important is when we say, how do you, you know, what does it look like to prioritize God's presence? If you're prioritizing God's presence by scripture and prayer and all these things, and you're not allowing your time spent with him to really, <laughs> like, uh, you know, we, we spend time in scripture to remember, but re- that remembering should do something within us. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's important when, when we prioritize God's presence, it's equally as much about saying, God, illuminate this scripture to me, illuminate in my life, come alive in my life, mm-hmm. you know, be real to me, as it is saying, God, let this word change me. Yeah. And so when I spend time with Jesus, when I prioritize God's presence in my life, if I'm in the right headspace and if I'm doing it intentionally, I'm always drawn back to repentance Mm -hmm. (laughs) because this thing tears me apart. It tears apart my sinful nature and, and it, and it requires me to do what Paul instructed the church in Ephesus to remember by prioritizing God's presence, but more importantly, to use that prioritization prioritization to repent of my sinful ways so that I can return back into right relationship with him. Um, didn't mean to preach a sermon right there, but, (laughs) but when he, I was, you know, just thinking that and I was thinking, man, that is, that is why Mm -hmm. we do it. It's, it's Mm -hmm. so not about the checklist. Like you said, it's so not about that. It's about God, what do you want to do with this in my life? Yeah. And us making time to say, Jesus, yeah, I messed up. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And I see that now because I've spent time in your presence. You've, you've made that aware to me. And then the opportunity to turn back to him, I think, is a critical part of it. What is it, um, if, if you could, and we'll, maybe we'll just kind of wrap up the conversation with this. If you could kind of just encourage a person um, with prioritizing God's presence. Maybe, you know, somebody's watching this podcast or, uh, and they're thinking, you know, like, you know, I, like uh, my, <laughs> what I'm doing right now doesn't show that I prioritize God's presence mm-hmm. at all. What does it look like to take some practical steps into that? What, what encouragements would you give to somebody just to, as first steps to say, hey, take this, go, go this direction? When you say that, like, I love the return in the sense that, like, there is no shame yeah. in yeah. not being close to God. Yeah. There is yeah. no condemnation in that. Like, yeah. he is the best friend that, like, you meet with him after years, and it's yeah. like nothing, no time yeah. has passed. Yeah. You no, know, he's always yeah. welcoming you, and so... Even in my own life, seasons where I have not been close to God or I have not been prioritizing Him, like He's always there with welcoming arms mm-hmm. to like bring me back into the fold. And yes. so just to know that I don't have to carry guilt yeah. about that, like I don't have to be afraid to come back to Him because I fear like He's gonna judge me for it. Like yeah. He's just always there to love me and just mm-hmm. wants to be with me. And so that that would be my encouragement. It's just like God is always there. Yeah, <laughs> He loves you. He just wants to be with you. That's really good. Yeah, yeah. I would say mine is just start. Yeah. Wherever wherever you are, just start somewhere. Yeah. Um, and then I would say grab a friend. Yeah, like, that's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, it's a repentant heart, but it's also like accountability. And it's, we're doing this together. No one's, no one is on their journey alone. And mm-hmm. thank you, Jesus, for a community. So. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. That's really good. Um, I, I echo both of those statements. That's very, really, <laughs> really good. You know, one of the things that I, I think is, is critical as we prioritize God's presence, you know, when... When Jesus left, you know that was the ultimate of God's presence. How could Mm -hmm. you deny God's presence by other more than standing next to Him? Mm -hmm. But when He left, He said, "I'm leaving you with something even greater." Yeah. And so, one of my encouragements that I would give probably is to maybe instead of even starting with trying to open up this really big book, is saying a really simple prayer of, "Spirit, Jesus said that you live within me, (laughs) and so I have a desire to know you," Mm -hmm. and I just, I'm, I just believe that if we're faithful in just saying that simple prayer, God will begin to reveal himself and it'll make us hungry yeah. mm-hmm. to get even more into his word and more into his presence. And it starts with just this desire to know. Yeah. And if we can start with that, I think that everything else we dive into, it's only going to make it even more profound. Um, but I would say the other thing is we want to encourage young adults to be a part of the community here yeah. at Venture Young Adults. Okay. And so uh, we meet for services the third Sunday of every month. We've got a service coming up this next month or in August, August 15th. We're meeting at Visible Coffee in the Mill Creek Town Center. Awesome. Got a guest speaker. It's going to be a lot of fun. Cow. Previously Spotted Cow, right? <laughs> the, the artist formerly known as Spotted Cow, uh, Visible Coffee. <laughs> 
And uh, man, it's just an awesome time to be in community and to really yeah. take some of that step. And, and I think you said it is mm-hmm. bring a friend, you know, yeah. be, you Amen. know, find yeah. somebody like that. And where do you do that? You find community like this to be a part mm-hmm. of. So that's our conversation based on our last service. Uh, we can't wait to hang out with you next week again for our Young Adult Podcast as we uh, talk more about and have a next conversation based on our service on the 15th. We want to encourage you to be there with us. Uh, but for this time, we want to thank you and we love you and we'll see you later.